Firstly, I want us to remember, we can work out the area of a triangle, and we're thinking about trig, right? So triangles. We can work out the area of a triangle using the formula that we all appeal to to get this number, this 186, right? That formula is area equals half, half, half base times height. Fantastic. By the way, do you remember why it's half base times height? Why not like a third or a quarter? Fantastic. Ah, you remember from when we actually looked at this. Every triangle. We're also reminded yesterday when you finally gave us that question. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, every triangle can be placed inside a rectangle that is exactly double its area. Okay? Well, you only want one half of that because it's the triangle part. That's where the fraction comes from. There's just a little tiny problem with this formula. It's that you always need to have what you guys just worked out. You always need to have um, a base. And you don't just need any height. There's a specific height you need. It's the perpendicular height. Okay? So you either need like a right angle triangle that's perpendicular. Or if I give you, I'll do it over here. Actually, it looks right angled anyway, but whatever. Um, if you get a triangle and it's not right angled, for instance, um, if this was 10 over here, and then what do we work this out? 37, or something like this, okay? If, it, if there's no right angles in here, that's not enough. You can't work out that area yet. You need more information. What length would you like to get in order for me to be able to calculate the area? So Where would you like me to say it again? Like from the tip. Yeah, fantastic. I haven't labeled this at all. So from the tip is accurate enough. And if I go straight to the bottom, so long as it's um, right angled, right? Does anyone know, by the way, that dotted line has a special name, starts with an A? We, we usually, we, we use the same word when we're talking about how high something is in the air, like a mountain or a plane, an altitude. Thank you. Okay. So, in order to use this, you need an altitude. However, we've just shown, even when you don't have all the information, trig can help you. So today, we're going to develop a new way to find the area of a triangle, and we'll be able to find the area of any triangle, not just the ones where we have an altitude. So please do me a favor, underneath this, um, this heading, I want you to draw a nice big triangle that's not right angled. Something like this. <laughs> so you're going to have to find you. Sorry, can you just do me? Right, fine. Now I can change the way I do the question. No, I'm going to just do it again. Sorry. You probably should be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so as you're drawing and labeling, here's my non right angle triangle. Now, just a tiny little note you'll see this time, because I want to talk about it in detail, I've labeled all of the vertices. Vertices are usually labeled with capital letters. And I've also labeled all of the lengths. Usually lengths are may labeled with um, lowercase. Okay? Um, in addition to that, and this is important, don't draw this, because I'm going to rub it off in a second. I've named the vertices and the lengths in a way that's not random. I've done them in relation to each other. So can anyone see? How do I know? Yeah, okay, so I'm doing it by opposites. So for example, little a is opposite big A. Uh, little c is opposite big C, etc. Okay? Now don't draw that onto your diagram because I'm going to get rid of that in a second. We're going to put other constructions. But just remember it because it's important. Alright, now this is not right angled. So therefore, just like I showed over here, what I'm sort of going to need to get is the height of this triangle. I'm going to put in an altitude in a second. I don't know what the altitude is, but I'm going to find out. So, down here, I'm going to label my altitude. So this altitude here is called H. 
because, because it does give me the height. I should label it with a, um, a right angle. Okay. okay, now when you have a look at this, because I've put in an altitude, I have formed some right angle triangles. And right angle triangles are what you can use to take advantage of all of this trick stuff. Okay. So have a look, have a look. How could I find what this is based on all the rest of the information around me? Okay. I'm going to focus your attention by thinking about one of the angles in particular. You actually could pick any angle you want. That's one of the nice things about this. But just for the sake of consistency, if I knew what the size of this angle was, um, I'm going to call it capital C because that's where it's at. If I knew the size of C, and I also know this, this length over here, A, can you see, and this is worth adding to your diagram, can you see that both of these guys, as well as the length that you want, they all exist in the same right angle triangle. Do you see it? Can we label it in? It goes like this. There's the side there. There's A. And I don't know what this bottom length is, but I actually don't care. All right. So have a look. Look at the red triangle now. Okay. How can I use my trick stuff to find H? And the answer is with sine, right? Because look. Oopsie daisy. So clumsy. All right. From this angle, the side you want is opposite, and the side you know is the hypotenuse. So I'm going to say sine of this angle that I'm looking at, C, is equal to opposite on hypotenuse. Okay, so that's H. Okay? So far, so good. So if all I want, I'm not the only one, if all I want is the altitude, I'm just going to multiply both sides by... A. A. And that'll leave the H on its own. Okay, so it's going to be on its own. I'll put it over on the left as well. So H is A times sine C. Okay. Now, these are all letters at the moment because I don't know what any of these are, but I can punch in the numbers as soon as I know them for a specific triangle. Okay, I'm almost there. Now I know what the height is, right? So therefore, I can come back to my original way of using the area of a triangle, right? So if H is this, therefore, the area is half times the base, which is still B down the bottom here, times the height. Well, this is the height, right? So can you see this formula now doesn't require H anymore? I could, um, I could rub out H. And I can use this A, this B, and this angle in here. Uh, it's nice to write it in a bit of a more alphabetical and rhythmic way. So the way that you will find on your formula sheet is this. The area of a triangle is half AB sine C. It's got a nice ring to it. If you go to your formula sheet, it's on the side, it's on the last page, I believe. So that's um, the side with two pages on it, and you'll find it sort of in the middle there on the left column of the third page. Okay? A or triangle, half A, B, sine C. Put a big box around that because that's a really useful result. It means I'm no longer reliant on having the altitude, the perpendicular height somewhere, so long as I know two sides and an angle, I'm done. Okay. Thing we're going to use, like, as in, do I use this one or do I use that one? Is that the question you're asking? No, or... how does this one know? Because if you have a different angle... Mm -hmm. Ah, Eliana, you couldn't have segued into my final point any better. Remember I said to you, right at the beginning, when we drew this thing, I said, <coughs> excuse me, I said pay attention to where the sides are, right? Remember I said, this A is opposite A, this B is opposite B, etc. Okay. <coughs> excuse me. So therefore, if you've got A and B, pick any two sides of the triangle you like. Do you see that angle C must be the angle that's in between them? Do you see that? Um, if this is A and B, the last side is C. If you go opposite that, you always find yourself between A and B. Okay? Um, you can draw yourself a new triangle just to prove that to yourself. If I had like, some random triangle over here, suppose I knew these two sides. Okay? That makes this side the C <coughs> side, right? Do you agree with that? Which means which angle is the C angle? 
it's this one up in here, right? We have a fancy name for that. We call it, and this is worth actually labeling onto your diagram, we call it the included angle. Because we all know what it's like when you've got two friends in there watching something on their phone and they've got their two headphones and then you're over there on the edge and you're excluded. Well, this is the included angle and it's right between them. You've got to use that one, right? you get something else otherwise. That example. Yeah, I, can you tell I've been there before? <laughs> all right, so <laughs> when you're doing half A, B, sign C, these can be any two sides you like, but this guy has to be, has to be the angle in between them. And sometimes a more difficult question will purposely give you the other angles even though you don't need them because what they're trying to do is work out, do you know, can you tell the difference um, between the ones that matter and the ones that don't? Okay, does that make sense? Okay, does anyone have any questions about this and how to use it? You've got it there on your formula sheet, so you never have to remember this. But to be honest, um, two unit students and extension one, they all have to learn this as well. Um, I found this one of the easiest ones to memorize. It kind of has a nice... It sort of rolls off the tongue. Half A, B, sign C. Uh, it either rhymes. 